Welcome, everybody, to this episode of Small Biz Buzz. I'm Scott Martineau. And I'm Crystal Huff. And today we have some awesome guests. We're excited for a really great conversation. Ronnie and Lamar Tyler of Tyler New Media. And uh, this is, we. I think we talked about earlier, this is either the second or third time they've been on the show. It's been a while. Glad to have you back. Welcome, Lon- Ronnie and Lamar. Thank you. Yeah. We're excited to be here. Exactly. Thanks for having us back. We're going to dive into some topics today that I think will be really exciting. As you know, as most of our listeners know, at Keep our our mission is to simplify growth for millions. We exist because we want to help entrepreneurs to be successful. And you know, part of the part of the essence of what we're about is understanding the power that entrepreneurship has across our world in so many different ways. And so we're just really excited to talk about entrepreneurship today. Um, I want to. I want to first ask Ronnie and Lamar. Why don't you, either one or both uh, give us a quick rundown of your business? And I think I think for our guests, it'd be great to know a quick overview just of what you do today. And then I'd also like to give just a little bit of a what you know what got you to this place, uh, what inspired you to start the company that you have today. And let's let's go there. And Crystal and I will jump in with questions. Well, our company name is, is Tyler New Media. Um, we've been running it now for almost 12 years. We're like, uh, I guess, a few months away from our 12 year anniversary. And we run several different online brands. And it started with just one brand, one blog. And that blog was blackandmarriedwithkids.com, a site that we created to support, equip and encourage marriage in the African-American community. Um, and we just just wanted a different perception of images, right? Yes. Yeah, we wanted more positive images. We felt like the media always portrayed like a more negative image of marriage and especially as it pertains to African-Americans. And we wanted people to see positive relationships and to provide them with resources and tools to support healthy relationships and marriages within a community. Because we know that strong communities, um, well, strong families build strong communities. And yep. so that was our, our goal for that. Yep. So we, we Wow, that. that's great. So that was, when was that? Did you, when did you start Black and Married with Kids? 2007, December. Yep, December, December 2007. 2007. December of 2007. All right. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, if it's any, if, if your experience is anything like Clayton and mine, I think you, I think you guys might know this, but Clayton, my co-founder, married my sister. So we are brothers-in-law. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many people have said, that is a horrible idea. What are you doing going into business together? But it, that pales in comparison to husband and wife going into business together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of lessons. We, we've learned a lot. Um, but I, I say also we benefit a lot because we are exact opposites. So I think a lot of times right, right. if you look at, at you know, going into business with your spouse or if you look at even going into business with a partner, people are looking for people that are exactly like them. And that may not be the best thing because what we found in our relationship is that it's really true to form where it's a visionary and implementer. And I'm the idea guy. I'm a, I'm a cowboy. I'm shooting from the hip every day with different ideas and Ronnie tells me to cut it off and I can't, I can't stop can't thinking about Ronnie's new ideas. Right now, it's, it's saying a lot. Let's it, just say that. And Ronnie is a uh, certified project manager by trade, 17 years with IBM before coming into our business. So she's the one that takes not all of my ideas, but some of the crazy ideas and actually makes sure that we get things done. So yeah. the, 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 yeah. the union, the marriage of it and the union and the business both work out well together. Right. And your spouse can be like the best business partner. Right. I, I say our marriage is our secret weapon sometimes because of the fact that we are able to work together. I think our advantage is exponentially greater than people that are just starting business by themselves because you're not going to have a better business partner than your spouse. As long as they're down, you know, down for it and they're, they're working towards it and working with it. And they don't necessarily have to be working in the business, but um, to have a, this, the support of your spouse, that's an exponential advantage. Now, if your spouse is pulling at you in the opposite direction, though, <laughs> you can find a way to make it work. Then you're just not going to have someone that's just ride or die for you. Like you're not going to have someone that's that is going to work just as hard as you, because when you own it, you're working hard. You're up till 2 a.m., you're not going to let it drop. And if he's tired, I'm picking it up. And if, you know, if I'm tired, he's picking it up. And so we can, we can have this thing, thing going around the clock. That made the difference in our blog. How, how, how do we have a blog that turns into a business that we can both leave, you know, six figure jobs in corporate, right? We never stopped. We were consistent and we were focused on it, even with four kids. And I think because of the marriage, we were able to actually succeed and be successful. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is just gold. I absolutely love that. I think, you know, both the diversity that each of you brings because of your background and the fact that, you know, this, this, 
this give and when I'm down, you're up. I love it. Love the way you phrase that exponential advantage. It's just, that's so fascinating. And I, you know, I think I've always felt like entrepreneurship is, it takes, it, it, it takes a lot. I don't, I, I was going to say it takes a lot out of you. I don't actually think it does because I think it ends up giving to you, but it requires a lot from you. Mm-hmm. Um, and in many ways, one of the reasons I like entrepreneurship is because it creates more growth in you. It creates growth in you that you can't really find in another way. And how cool is it that you get to have that experience where that growth, that really, I mean, which is a very intimate process, right? Is you get to share that with your spouse. And I, and I know, you know, my wife has recently started a business, so I have a, a firsthand experience of what it's like. And, you know, I'm, I'm playing a certain role in that business. We have a lot of different views as well. And it just, it forces a level of growth, not just individually, but in the relationship that I think is really powerful. Love, I love your perspective on that. It's so great, Ronnie. You know, and I think it also lends to the fact that the things that make for a great marriage make for just a great business partnership. Being able to communicate. That's something you got to be able to do with your business partner. And you, you better be able to do it in your marriage. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you're, you're married, you're to figure it out. You might as well exactly. use it in both. Right. Um, be, being able to trust. Right. <laughs> being able to trust your business partner and that they're going to do what they need to do when they need to do it. And then you need to be able to trust your spouse and your marriage and your relationship. So a lot of the things that uh, benefit our marriage also benefit us working together in the business. And then I feel like we had. Also, the benefit of our, our first brand that we launched, which is now one of several, Black and Married with Kids, also being something that focused on marriage. So we talked to a lot of experts. We did seven full length documentary films where we were going to the homes of couples that have been newlyweds and then some that have been married 30, 40, 50 plus years and be able to learn from the wisdom of other people. So we mm-hmm. had the benefit of taking all of that and then learning those lessons and using those and applying them to our own relationship as well. That's cool. I, That's very cool. I remember reading your guys' customer success story when I started like almost three years ago. I can't believe it's already been almost three years, but I'm really excited to be chatting with you guys today because it was so impressive to see that really you had such a strong purpose and mission, but also to see how you were able to really grow and, um, you know, your guys' ideas were just, I feel like, especially at the time, they were like so ahead of it. And um, just really intriguing when I was reading through that entire customer story and watching your guys's video, I was brand new. So it was like so important to understand how our customers are thriving and what they're doing, you know, that helps me be a better marketer. But I have to say, I'm, I was really excited when Scott said you guys agreed to come on. So thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Oh, well, thank you. So I do want to come back, obviously, and I want to talk about this sort of intersection between race and entrepreneurship and what you experienced as you built your company. But let's, let's, uh, I want to keep going too and just hear where you're at with your current business. So sorry for the long interruption there, but why don't you keep giving us the rundown? (laughs) No problem. Well, as I mentioned, once we launched in, uh, you know, did black and married with kids, we got like a lot of press and visibility off of it. So we quickly grew. I mean, we had a Facebook page, over half a million fans on it. We were on CNN, HLN, the Today Show, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, um, Black Enterprise, Ebony Essence Jet, Parenting Magazine, a bunch of stuff. So we had a lot of visibility and people saw us publicly growing this business. So as we grew that and we released different films, we would go around the city doing our own, excuse me, the country doing our own tours. So we would um, do seven to 10 city tours on our own. We would do some radio advertisements, some Facebook ads, because this was still in the early days of Facebook. Uh, Mm -hmm. So we do Facebook ads and we would go into these markets and do screen and sell tickets and then sell products at the end of the actual movies with bundles of our different movies and t-shirts and all this different stuff. And during that path, we really learned how to market and sell because we yeah. had to figure out a way to monetize this stuff. At the time we were still working, both working our, our full-time jobs. Ronnie was a project manager for IBM. Wow. I ran the IT department of a TV station in Washington, DC. So we got just really good at being able to figure out who exactly the target customer was finding out where our product fit in their lives, what challenges did that product actually overcome, figuring out how to build community and audience, and then how can we get this community and audience to believe and buy into the actual products and services that we had to offer. So we went from documentary films to eBooks and audio books, membership sites, boot camps, conferences, and even four cruises with our Black and Married with Kids audience. And from there, people kept asking us, can you teach me how to do it? Can, can you please teach me how to do what you did. So we launched a separate brand called Traffic, Sales, and Profit, where now we work with African-American entrepreneurs to help them try to figure out how to drive more traffic, convert more sales, and grow the amount of profit in their businesses. So we've been doing that since 2015. 
that brand, uh, we do two conferences a year here in Atlanta. The first wow. one in 2016 had 47 people. Uh, the last in-person one we did in 2019 had 504. So it's been exponential growth. <laughs> That's awesome. It's again, right, filled a need that's been in our community. And, and it's we talked about purpose before, like this is, is another piece of our purpose around uplifting families in our communities. First, we did it through marriage and parenting. Uh, one of our films, we did it through uh, um, uh, generating uh, wealth. And now we do it through traffic sales and profit through entrepreneurship. You guys must be using the heck out of those ability to have multiple sales pipelines now <laughs> with all these businesses. I, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, that only came out not too long ago. I hope you guys are utilizing that for all these pipelines you got. Yeah, we, we have a lot going on in our, if you like, we actually, I, we were talking about that, that recently. Yeah, like I need to say the least. <laughs> I, I was just saying, it's a great lesson to teach your kids all about entrepreneurship. Yes, it is. Actually, one of our daughters right now is work with us all summer. She's about to go to college, but she worked with us all summer and then she'll even uh, work remotely while she's in school doing some light work for us. Yeah. And then the younger kids, you know, over the years Love we it. had them packaging up DVDs and shipping stuff out and going to the post office with us. So they definitely have, have gotten to see it firsthand. Oh, this is so That's amazing. Great. So there's so much gold here that I'd love to dig into. We're probably not going to have time to get into all of it. Um, but I want let, to, let's, let's just maybe, I want to lob out a topic here that we can talk about for a little bit. And that is the, the role of, you know, obviously the, the conversation today um, about race is, you know, I think stronger than it's ever been before. And, you know, the racial equality and the, and the, I find the debates are so polarizing. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people are, are just trying to understand which way is up. I want to, I want to shift the conversation slightly to say, in your, you know, you clearly have uh, in in at least the you know two of the businesses, black and married with kids, and traffic sales and profit. You've been really clear about your audience, and you've gone to the black community. And um, I don't know if I don't think that's necessarily the only the only clients that you service. But I want to understand. I just want to dig into what do you feel is the role of entrepreneurship, you know, as it relates to some of these topics that we're hearing about in the media today. I'd just love to hear what's on your what's been on your mind as you've been, you know, you've lived this for, you know, long long before the 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 level of conversation that's going on today. I just mm -hmm. love to hear from your perspective. What do you, what do you see in all of this? You know, for me, and then I'll let you know Ronnie share her point of view. Definitely. I mean, for me, um, the one of the reasons we really focus on traffic sales and profit is to build the power base of economics in the African-American community. So for us, that looks like um, uh, closing the wealth gap. Like there's a huge wealth gap and it's not getting smaller between different groups in this country. Mm -hmm. And right now, like African-Americans are pulling up the rear and we want to help close that gap through entrepreneurship. When we look at statistics around uh, job loss and, and joblessness, what we see is that that gap is larger with African-Americans uh, communities a lot of times. And one of the reasons I say that is because we need more African-American business owners and not just more African-American business owners. We need more African-American business owners that actually employ people. I think mm -hmm. a lot of times what happens is people hire other people that look like them. And then we mm -hmm. see a lack of diversity, but people pretty much just pull people in their immediate circle, people that they can relate with. And they say, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I think he or she is a person like myself and let me bring them into the company. Yeah, I think I think I think, you know, I'm hearing a couple of things. One is you're leveraging the principles of entrepreneurship to create opportunity for the entrepreneurs themselves. And you're extending that vision beyond to say, look, entrepreneurs are the ones that are hiring. And, and the more black entrepreneurs you can create, the more they're going to naturally hire people who are like them and around them and in their circle of influence. And that'll help create a lift in the communities that you're talking about. Um, Definitely. That that's awesome. And I, just out of curiosity, I'm curious uh, what percentage of your target market is not black? And are you also, is part of your mission also to help other entrepreneurs recognize the value of diversity? This has been a big topic for us too, but the value of diversity in their small businesses, which I think do tend the way you've talked about. I know that's the way it was for us. You know, you look around at who you're most close with and who thinks like you, because that's, that's the way we thought when we started the business. And you end up with a bunch of people that, you know, that are, are very similar and maybe lack diversity. So are you reaching out in your business as well? Or are you really just focused on the black communities? Primarily we just focus on the black community. And, and what we are doing is the whole piece when people say you should lift yourself up by your bootstraps. That's ex exactly what we do. But what's interesting, and then Ronnie can definitely speak to this on the black and American kids side and what we saw as we created our business, is that when you do lift yourself up by the boot by your bootstraps, a lot of people actually have issue with that as well. 
So on one hand, they say, hey, you know, mm-hmm. you have the same opportunities. The United States do it. Do it on your own. But when you when you do, you're faced with criticism and critique. I mean, how many times have we ran black and married with kids that people come and say, you know, what what if I ran a site that was white and married with kids? And we said, well, well, every marriage site that's out there basically is white and married with kids yeah, because that's all right. you'll see in the images. That's all you'll see with the writers. That's all you'll see with the content. So the need is is so acute and, and so needed in our community that we had to directly address it. Right. And I just feel like the devastation to our community It's just been so devastating, the impacts of slavery, the impact of segregation, Jim Crow, that you have to be intentional. This is not something that you can say, "Okay, we we stopped this and now everything is just going to correct itself. There needs to be intentional action. It's just like, you know, we we know who our avatar is. So we target our avatar. Do we are we saying we excluding other avatars or if if other people come to our site, they wouldn't be welcome? No, because that's our that's our environment. That's our um that's the culture that we've built. And so anyone that wants to join our list or come to our website, they'll see that it's a home for us. And if someone there is saying, Oh, you're not African American. You can't be here. Our audience, they'll, they'll stop it. We won't even have a chance to get in because that's the type of environment and culture that um, we have. And so although we are clear about our avatar, we do have people even within our mastermind and our coaching programs that are not African American. Um, because it is com- you, you are comfortable. You, you can come, but we are clear about our our mission to uplift, equip, and support the community to support families in our communities, um, so that we can build fond, strong families. We can, uh, you know, close in that 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 gap, the wealth gap, and um, just build up our communities. And so that that's what our mission is. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can add one thing, one one of the things that's interesting, guys, as we look at. Um, you know, race and, and business and all these type of things is a lot of times Ronnie and I will have friends that are not black, right? That could be, um, you know, white friends and, and they'll say, it's amazing what you guys are doing. We'll say, you know, come to the conference and they'll say, well, am I going to be okay? Like, like, is it is it cool for me to come? Is it fine for me to come? I, I don't know. I might feel awkward if I'm the only white person. But what's interesting is that most of the actual events that we go to, we are the only black you people. You feel the same thing, yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah, so, yeah so to us, it's funny because, you know, you know this, is, this is really our life. When we go to marketing events, when we go to conferences to learn more, uh, to get access to network and things like that, oftentimes we are the only people in the room. So it's just what's our norm would be just out of, I guess, out of normal uh, for most people and would make them, you know, get paused. And a lot of times makes them not show up. But in order for us to get to where we need to get for our business, this is just what life is every day. I love the intentionality of the target, the intentionality of what's gone on in the world and in our history and the fact that you're attacking this. Give us a little bit more of an insight into that. What does it look like? Take us maybe to one of your conferences. You look out in the audience and you see people. What, do you, what, what, is the, what is the state that you find these black entrepreneurs who are reaching and, stri- and striving? You know, What are the disadvantages that are real and palpable that they feel? And what are they going to hear from you from stage, you know, that helps them to rise up, grab their bootstraps and, and, you know, take control and do these amazing things? Right. So I think the first thing is that I, when people come to our conference, they're just in awe just to see so many African-American um, entrepreneurs that are being successful. And we're providing those examples from people that are making, you know, five figures, six figures and even seven figures. And we're able to have them on stage. And we're able to have them share their journey so that people mm-hmm. can see what is possible. That's another thing. People actually need to see that it's possible for them as well. And so we're able to bring those speakers on stage, that speakers that may or may not get invited to some of the other conferences. And um, so I think that's the biggest thing is just being able to the imagery of it all. The imagery, imagery of it all is powerful in itself because it inspires people to keep on going, going and to keep pushing. I like the fact that people see us as a couple as well. Um, I feel like we have a lot of couples that are entrepreneurs that follow us just because of our example with our, you know, black and married with kids and they see us working together. And we really want people to know that it is possible and how um, much of, a, of an advantage that they have if they're able to work together as couples um, to to be entrepreneurs. So we see a lot more of that, I think at our conference because we are a couple and that we do it together. So we see that as well. Um, what else? When you say it, you mean you're, you're converting people to the idea of, Hey, you can do this together. Go for it. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And we also let people know that doing it together 
it's different for different people, right? Um, because a lot of people think doing it together has to be what Lamar and I have, meaning both of us working in the business. And we always like to say, if you're working in the business and you have a spouse that's at home and they're not pulling on you and you're able to work full time and you're able to, to work these long hours and they're holding it down at home, they're just as important to that business as you are. And so I, I feel like a lot of people are in entrepreneurship and they're mad at their spouse because they're not they don't have their hands on their business and they're not appreciating what their spouse is doing at home. You're at this conference and you're mad because your spouse is at home uh, with the kids and you should be happy because you have that flexibility. And some people don't realize that they wouldn't be as far along in their business if their spouse was not yeah. at home and working and things like that. And so we ha- we we help to um, we, we like to let people know that it comes in um, a variety of different you know, scenarios, but at the same time, when a couple works together in whatever scenario, whether your wife is at home or whether you're in the business full time or you're both in the business full time, that's the advantage that you have. And so, um, yeah, but they, they love it. What a, what a powerful reframing for people, you know, who may come to a conference like that or just be in their business and be frustrated. And, you know, that, that weight of frustration is just so toxic for any entrepreneur right it's like it's the opposite of really what they need to be doing what a great thing what a great message you're sharing and if if i could add scott i think what's important when they come is not only do we reframe their outlook and their mindset and what's possible we do it in a culturally safe space meaning they're in a space and i can't tell you how many times somebody's got up to the mic when we do q a and just says i feel like i'm at home or Mm -hmm. i'm go i go to conferences and Imagine they go to a conference and they're the uh, only person of color there. Or on top of that, maybe they're the only person of color and in a male-dominated field. So now they're the only person of color and the only (laughs) woman there, definitely the only woman of color there. And then they get to come into a space where they see other black women and other black men all around them, black couples, black children that are entrepreneurs all in that space. And we see the mainstream conferences a lot of times say, well, we would have diversity, but we don't know who people are. We need people that are qualified. And what we can say is that every event we do, the stage is is full of qualified African-American men and women that are business owners. At our last event last June, we had Janice Bryant Howroy, the first African-American woman to build a billion dollar business with a B, billion, uh, Act One group out in uh, based out of Los Angeles. So we can put these historical figures. We had uh, Dr. Uh, Lonnie Johnson, right, mm-hmm. the uh, in- individual that invented the super soaker. So not only can we talk entrepreneurship, we can bring people that literally are today's examples of black history to that stage. We can put examples in front of people to say, hey, you know what? Whatever you dream about, whatever you want to be, you can actually be it. And here are people that can show you because while Ronnie and I are spoiled and we live in Atlanta and we used to live in the D.C. area where we see a large number of African-Americans at all levels of the socioeconomic scale, there are African-American individuals, they live in places where they don't see a lot lot of other people that look like them. So their representation of what being black is, is like a lot of other people in this country is based on what they see in the news, what they see in the papers. And even what they may think is possible needs to be shifted through a lens once they get into one of our events. I love Uh, that. I'm also like jealous. I wasn't in the room when the super soaker talk went on because (laughs) it was about making like a huge business off of that. I, I just think that's so amazing. And um, lots to learn from no matter who you are. Your friends should start taking you up on that. I'd be at those conferences. Hey, and, and we invite you. And, <laughs> and it's, it's literally that. It's just so much opportunity. It is um, almost like a homecoming experience, right? Going back to your, your high school or your, or your college homecoming is that type of relationship. And then it's still setting the bar for this is what excellence looks like. This is where we need to go. This is where we are as a community. This is where we need to go. And guess what? We're the ones we've been waiting for. We're the ones in this room And we'll fight through every obstacle. We'll fight through every challenge in order to have success for us and our children and to create a new legacy for um, our community and this country. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm intrigued there. There's, you know, like I think about, by the way, first of all, just a second, I I, uh, had chills and got a little emotional just hearing you talk about that feeling of home. I know when we when we used to have Icon, which is our our user conference there was a very similar feeling where entrepreneurs who in many ways feel alone out in the world, you know, and I think Mm -hmm. one of our part of our mission is to change that so that they don't feel alone. They feel like they have community and, you know, just the, the intersection of you focusing on your community with such intentionality 
and entrepreneurship and bringing them all together. It, it's just, you know, like I can't say enough for what you're doing to change the world. And where my mind is, is there, you know, is, as we look at global change and we guess I guess we can start with change in our country, there are different tools and levers that we can pull, right? There are certain things that the government can do. And obviously there's a lot of conversation about what the government could or should or whatever do. There's another lever, it's called entrepreneurship. There's other levers. And interestingly, I think also marriage and family, there's, you know, there's lots of opportunity there. How do you, like, what, what is it like for you to sit in the current dialogue and narrative that's going on today? Um, first of all, do you get any, any pushback or on the opposite, just, um, you know, are people responding to your call to use entrepreneurship as this lever um, to help, you know, to help in our current environment? Do you have any pushback? Do you have any thoughts? And I don't want this to go, we, you know, we, we definitely don't want this to be a, uh, you know, politically or polarize, a political or polarizing conversation. But I'm just curious, you know, you're, you're exercising this entrepreneurship lever to its fullest extent. What do you see, you know, with what else is going on in the world today? I think for us, a lot of it is business as usual. And it's, it's funny to a degree uh, because as things shift and things happen and now, you know, people say, well, we need to focus on having a seat at the table for black businesses as well. What we say is this is what we've been focusing on <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> for the last few years. Right. All of a sudden, you know, people say well, we need to support and and buy from black businesses. And we look around our community and say, well, we've been supporting and we've been <laughs> buying from black businesses. So if, if anything, there may be increased opportunity for some of the businesses in our communities. But our mission hasn't changed. Our mission is still the same thing it was when we first started. Uh, traffic sales and profit, right? To to create that space for entrepreneurs, African American entrepreneurs, to grow and scale their businesses. So so, I think that's what it is. And again, when we talk about what that community is and what's special about it, I think another piece of it is just the fact that I think when you go into other groups and other rooms, you never know what the intention is of the people that are in that room, right? Because right. Um, when they're at one of our events, and I can talk about the fact that we've been discriminated against when we went to get capital or lending from banks. And when I share that story or somebody shares that story with me, right, they know I'm not going to look at them and say, well, did you really try? Or was your credit bad? You know, all the, all these other things, right? Like it just can't, it just, like banks just don't do that. Well, yes, they do. Because <laughs> we've had, you know, uh, great cash. We've had great capital, great collateral and still got everything dragged through and still had to jump over every fence and duck, duck and, you know, and crawl and, and climb and everything and had our financial team and our money team literally frustrated and screaming and yelling when we got off those calls, say, what in the world? Why have they not yes. given you this money yet? Right. Like so. So. But again, in a safe space, some of the things you have to do outside that safe space, you don't have to do. You can just kind of let your guard down and say, you know, this was happening to me. You know, other people have empathy for you. And you know, hey, we have empathy for you. We we see you. We realize what's going on, and let's take it from there, and then still be successful in spite of it. Wow, yeah, that's so great. And I, and I think that's, you know, one of the beauties of entrepreneurship is exactly what you just said, right? Staring staring in the face something that you know didn't go as planned, and maybe even be completely inequitable and the you know the wrong thing, and you stare it in the face and you march right past it, and you get to show everybody exactly what you've done, which is just so amazing, so inspiring, Ronnie. What else are we missing out on? Um, no, I think we got, we pretty much covered it all. I just think that I think the difference for me during this time is that we we have control over our destiny, right? I mean, I, I know that a lot of people right now feel like they're not in control and they can't control what's going on. Whether you know, you know, is is our building going to be shut down, you know, social distance and things like that. And when you think as an entrepreneur, you know, we're thinking, okay, we, we just have to pivot. We just have to, we know how to, to make money. We know how to, to create a business. We know how to build a business. Now we have to just kind of put our heads together and be more proactive and, and put a plan together and, and be in control of our own destiny. Right. As, mm -hmm. Versus waiting for someone to tell us what's going to happen next. And um, so that's where I felt like Lamar really stepped up to be the leader in our communities to say, you know, we're not going to get caught out here. This is what we're going to do. COVID is coming and this is how we're going to react. And this is how we're going to shift. And this is how we're going to survive and thrive through this time. And I felt like with him showing that leadership within our community, 
it, it, it's been so so great because people weren't down, people weren't getting depressed. They were getting they they got into action, you know. Wow. So that that's the biggest thing for me as far as like with the entrepreneurship and things that were going on right now, even with um the the the, the social and civil injustices that are going on, you could feel so helpless. And so, you're just so hurt as an African-American and like so powerless. And I feel like entrepreneurship puts that power back into our hands, puts that mm-hmm. power as far as our legacy, controlling what we do, what we do with our kids, you know, how much money we, wa- we make. We're in control of that. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that that's really empowering wow. for our community. Now that gave me chills. What can other entrepreneurs who may not be part of the BIPOC community, what can they do to practice allyship of their fellow entrepreneurs going through 2020. I mean, 2020 has been a crazy year. So how can other entrepreneurs practice really that allyship and make sure they're um, supporting their entrepreneurship community? I guess I would just say uh, perhaps, and I don't know if this maybe it's too simple, but just kind of open your eyes and open your eyes, have empathy in, 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 I guess you could say open your eyes and open your ears as well, right? To look and see what's around you, to look and see what opportunities do you have to partner up with other people and other communities that um, you can, um, you know, maybe do business with somebody else or or tie somebody else in into your event because tying somebody else in your event is not giving them a chance so that you feel better or you feel like yeah I can check this thing off of my sheet. Tying somebody else in your event may open up your event to an entirely new group of people that wouldn't have attended otherwise because they don't see themselves mm-hmm. represented. So you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's really just being able to tie those things down, listening, and like I said, having empathy for other groups. A lot of times. I think the, the cold word now for I don't want to have empathy is I don't want to be politically correct. So when it's anything that may actually stretch you to have empathy for some other group or for you to have some level of maturity um, or for to say, OK, this is how other people view it through their lens. Let me stop and actually think and process that. The easy thing is say, oh, that's that's being politically correct. I don't want to you trying to make me be too PC. This world is being too. This country's too uh, politically correct now. And what I can say is this country no matter how great it is, has done a lot of things that have been wrong over the last years, the last decades and so forth. And when Ronnie talked about earlier, people say, well, you know, what is this group of people so so mad about it? Or what are they talking about? What are they marching about? Slavery was so long ago. No, really, slavery was only a few generations because my grandmother's grandmother would have been born into slavery based mm-hmm. on that time. If you think about that, like most people here know they know who their grandparent was. That they that person knows who their grandparent was. Their grandparent would have been born into actual slavery. When people get frustrated and they say, well, what is this whole thing about black? And, and I'm hearing so much about being black. What I explain to people all the time and Ronnie and I did a lot through black and married with kids. Blackness is not just a color. What black is to us is an actual culture, because in so many instances, our culture was stripped away from us. So when you have individuals that can say uh, my heritage traces back to Ireland, my heritage traces back to um, you know, Norway or Scandinavia or Russia or all these other places, pretty much if you look at most of the actual uh, family tree and you trace it and things like that, um, African-Americans in most cases can only go up until the late 1800s because before that time we weren't included on the actual census data. So, you know, when you don't know who you are and now thanks to some companies like African Ancestry, we can actually find out what country through the DNA, what country Mm -hmm. uh, we came from and what actual tribe of current day people we relate to. But without information like DNA information, you don't even know all the way back where you, where you went to. So like I said, just having empathy, learning, educating yourself about other people other than yourself. And if again, one more time I'll say for the people say, well, I shouldn't have to learn about somebody else or everyone else. What I'll say is again, in our shoes, we spend our whole lives learning about other people, other cultures without having, um, anyone really learn about ours i uh i read this book recently called white fragility it's a really good really good book that basically said it she, she's writing to a white audience this is a diversity trainer who mm-hmm. was tired of walking into corporate america and having having people walk in oh why are we having this conversation i'm not you know i'm not racist and you know i i there were there were many things that you know the her, her whole point was to help people realize like you got to be able to have a conversation about this but there were and there were many takeaways but one that seems relevant right here is she said that most whites are never taught that it would be a disadvantage to have diversity in their friend circles. And she didn't use those exact words, but you know, I think what you're saying is, look, there is power that comes in understanding and reaching out and building community you know, across, 
whatever divide is there, we're talking about race. There are others as well, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, so I think it's just a great it's a great challenge I think for entrepreneurs to think about that. And you know, I I, I chuckle when I think about how uh, when I started our company, I was so like I was completely clueless. I was exactly that. I was completely clueless. Who did we hire? If you think like me and you look like me, I'm going to hire you. And you know, the more that we've built our business, the more we recognize no, that's not that is not where the magic come from comes from. It comes from the the beautiful blend of people coming in with so many different perspectives and so that's a great challenge i think to the entrepreneurial community oh i feel like we could go on for another hour but we probably yeah i i feel like this could be like a three-day workshop at least um but yeah i feel like there's actually risks associated at this point without taking on inclusivity and diversity within businesses and i think that starts from small business up or big business down. Either way you look at it, um, businesses, I think, that don't think about these topics and diversity and inclusion are actually going to be left behind, in my opinion. Scott, I was just sharing, we had a DM today about um, uh, from someone saying they were considering Keep, and they wanted to know who our CEO was, what our mix of diversity at Keep was, and what we've done to support BIPOC. And I mean, I'm proud where we work. I had an answer for them easily and I know where we are and I know where we're going. But I'm just saying, if people think the world of business is not changing with diversity, it is changing every day. And I mean, that DM is one of many that will come if companies, even the smallest company aren't aligned. People wanna know where their money's going and who it's supporting. Well, Ronnie Lamar, uh, thank you so much. I feel totally filled up. I feel instructed. Um, you're an example of, I think, what entrepreneurship can do in the world. And it's just so exciting to hear it. So any any final thoughts either of you want to pile on? Um, no, I just think that, you know, I, I, I we've been blessed, um, you know, to, to work together in, you know, entrepreneurship. I don't want to, I don't want to glorify it because it's been a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, been a, it's been a lot of work, but it has given um, us so much. We've been so blessed and we've been able to, you know, do a lot with our family and kids. So I'm, I'm blessed with it. And also we uh, have been blessed to be able to use uh, Keep and Infusionsoft in, on this journy as well. And uh, we miss Icon. We miss that conference. <laughs> That's what I'll say. It's coming back. Okay. <laughs> it's coming back. Uh, I also just want to say real quick, Ronnie, I'm sorry, I cut you off a couple times. I was having like a slow sound issue where it wasn't coming in and on time. So I just wanted to say that wasn't intentional. I think what you were saying when it caught up was way more impressive than anything I was trying to say. So sorry for that. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> the beauty <laughs> of you. Zoom. Beauty of Zoom. I know. Well, I know. And go for it, Scott. Speaking of speaking of talking over each other. So um <laughs> Let's let's just end really clearly. How do people find out about you? Uh, where where's the best place for for people to learn more? Sure, to learn more about uh, us together and to learn more about the brands that we run, you can go to www.tylernewmedia.com. Tylernewmedia.com. Thank you so much. Uh, I I can't, couldn't be more excited about where we went today and what we got out of this. Thank you for the time. I know you're busy. You got plenty of other things to do. Um, thanks for giving this to the audience and to our listeners of Small Biz Buzz. I hope you you felt what we did today. Let's let's all do our part. I think this is a shining example of what can happen when you take entrepreneurship. For you, it might look like using entrepreneurship to impact yourself first and your family. But the reaches for entrepreneurship and what we can impact are, they go far and they go broad. And thank you, Ronnie Lamar, for giving us an example of that. Thank you. All right. Have a good, we're going to call that, have a good one. And we're going to call out a wrap for this episode of Small Biz Buzz. Thanks for listening to Small Biz Buzz. Please take a second to subscribe to the show and leave a five-star rating. It helps keep the show going. And if you need a hand with growing your small business, head over to keep.com. That's K-E-A-P.com and get started. More business, less work. That's Keep.